As usual, I turn off my camera. Well, uh, the topic of this lecture is uh, classes and objects. Classes and objects in C++. This is a outline of the lecture. We discuss about main concepts, such object-oriented analysis, object-oriented design, object-oriented programming, and we consider one simple example of class, class and object. During all the semester until now, we write uh, programs that consists of functions. This approach to divide the large, pro large problem into smaller parts, smaller sub problems, and implement uh, and solve these problems sub problems as a separate parts is called modular decomposition and this approach for program development is good for small and medium programs object oriented decomposition decomposition of the task to be solved into different object, different classes is oriented for development of large programs, large and very large. And object-oriented decomposition allows to develop, debug, test and support very large, very complex programs in efficient way. Of course, in our, uh, during our lessons, we consider some simple examples, simple examples of classes and objects. On this slide, you may see the main concepts of object-oriented programming. Here, I just uh, mention this main concept. I don't want to go into details because some concepts we just skip, but another concept concepts we consider later during our lessons in May. These concepts are abstraction, encapsulation, modularity, hierarchy, and polymorphism. What is it we discuss later? Uh, especially what is uh, encapsulation we discuss right now during this lesson. What is modularity and abstraction we discuss later. This concept hierarchy we skip and Polymorphism also we discuss about it later. When we speak when we speak about object oriented programming, uh, there are three main approaches. I can mention these three main approaches: object oriented analysis, object oriented design, and Finally, object-oriented programming. 
So our lessons are about object oriented programming. How to use classes and objects in particular programs. Object oriented analysis and design. Is one of the basic courses at software engineering master program. And <clears throat> in this basic lecture. We will concentrate. On the syntax of C++ programs. So we discuss about. Constructions of the language. We consider that so that allows us to declare classes and objects in C++ programs. But as example, as a very, very short and simple example of object oriented analysis and design, we consider one simple program, one simple problem. Suppose that we want to develop a program that will carry out operations with some geometric objects. A very simple example of a geometric object is a rectangle. So we should somehow describe this rectangle in our program. How the rectangle can be described? First, we should fix the position of the rectangle. So we should fix one of the corners, this or this or this. And after that, We can make a supposition that every line, every side of this rectangle is parallel to the corresponding axis. So this side is parallel to X, this side is parallel to Y. If we made such suppositions, in this case, we can describe the position of the rectangle using the three, sorry, four values. First two values corresponds to coordinates of one of the corners of this rectangle. For example, this one or this one, but one corner, coordinates of one corner. And two values that corresponds to the lengths of the correspondent side, this and this. So the rectangle. <coughs> Is the, can be described by means of four values, two coordinates and two lengths. So this is a simple example of the object-oriented analysis and, uh, and data engineering. So we look to the problem and we fix, we find the data that represents the concrete object from this problem statement. In our particular case, in our simple example, this object is a rectangle. You can suggest another data that can that can be used to describe the rectangle. For example, I can 
describe the rectangle by means of the coordinate coordinates of this corner and this corner. These two corners. If I know these two corners, I can compute the length of this side. I can compute the length of this side. Or you can suggest any other uh, forms how we can represent the rectangle. What data, what data we need to use to represent the rectangle? <clears throat> well, the next question that we should answer is uh, what can we do with the rectangle? Suppose that our program must show this rectangle on the screen, hide this rectangle from the screen, and if this rectangle is shown at some position, we can move this rectangle on some uh, distance by coordinate x and y, dx and corresponding, corresponding distances, dx and dy. These actions correspond to their visualization of rectangle on the screen. Another portion of actions can be uh, related with the geometric properties of this rectangle. For example, we can compute the perimeter of this rectangle. We can compute the area of the rectangle and so on. What is it? It is a very basic example of object-oriented design. We, <clears throat> we consider the object, the rectangle. We fix the data that describes this rectangle. And we list the actions that we can do with the rectangle. So now this rectangle can be considered as object with this data and these list of actions that we can do with the rectangle. A brief summary what we have done. We find the entity in the problem domain, the rectangle. We describe the data required for representation of this entity. And we describe the operations for this entity. And what is the result of this? The result is a new data type, the rectangle. So from the from this from one point of view, I can say that now we describe a new data type. Rectangle. What is a data type? We discuss about the definition of data type several times during our lessons. How we can def define a data type? First, we should define the set of values set of values of this data type, then set of operators that can be applied to the values of the 
of to the particular values. And the rule of storing the values of this data type in computer memory. For example, the size of the memory, code and decoding rules, and so on. If we define all of these, uh, I can say that we define a new data type. For example, the type unsigned char, the set of values of this data type is uh, integer numbers from 0 up to 255. This uh, data type required one byte for storing in computer memory. The list of operations that can be applied to the data of this data type is a plus. Uh, addition, subtraction, division, uh, getting the reminder, and so on. And the rule for for representation of these values is uh, just the binary representation, binary combinations that we store in computer memory, starting from all zeros. Eight zeros, zero, 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 eight zeros up to eight ones. All of the binary combinations that we can write in eight bits. It's just an example of uh, one of the data types. There are a lot of built in data types. I show you showed you the diagram with all of the data types and built-in data types are int, float, double, char, and so on. And some modifications of this data type, for example, unsigned int, long double. There are a list of uh, so-called user-defined data types. And also we consider some of these user-defined data types. The examples of user-defined data types are arrays, enumerations, structures. So all of these data types are user-defined data types. But if we are just if we consider what is abstract data type, abstract data type is defined by two sets, set of values and set of operations. If we define these two sets, the values and the operations that we, that we can apply to these values, I can say that we define a data type. And the concept of class is more or less correspond to user defined data type. So again, abstract data type is a set of values and set of operations. C++ already contains some statements that we can use to create a new data type, but these sets set of values and set of operations 
are not encapsulated into one syntax structure. The example, a good example can be written using structures. I can, I can uh, declare a, a structure and I can implement operators as their separate functions. But in this case, operator operators are not encapsulated with the data. So the class from this point of view, class as a new data type can be considered as a Uh, such syntactic structure, such uh, sy syntactic construction in the language that gather data and operator and operations with this data. The data corresponds to so called member fields and Operations with this data corresponds to member functions. Declaration of uh, member fields is very similar to variable declarations. And declaration of member function functions is very similar to functions declaration. The general scheme of uh, general form of declaration of the class is presented here on this slide. This is the general form of class declaration. First, I should write the keyword class. So it's underlined here, but of course, it, let me just delete. Yeah, the keyword class. Then it should be written class name. Then I can write so called private members of this function. Private is a keyword. It can be written or not, because by default, all of the members of this class are considered as a private members. Private members correspond to the hidden part of the class. And another obligatory part is a public section. In public section, I can also declare some fields, some functions. The hidden part hides the private part, hides the implementation details. And public part is open for the users of the class. When you declare the class, don't forget this semicolon. This is uh, one of the place where semicolon is obligatory after the close brace. Well, In our example, it's again, it, it's not a work an example, just an example of how we can declare some class. Class with name rectangle. The private members of this class are 
two values of the type double, x and y, one value of the type int color, and declaration of our public functions, show, height, and so on. Again, let me repeat that this part is hidden, that is not accessible from other program, and this part is public. Later, I will, I will show you the example in Visual Studio. Private and public are special access, uh, access specifiers. All information in private section is accessible only inside the class and its member functions. All information in public section is accessible everywhere. We can omit a private section. Private section is optional, but a public section should exist as a rule. And we can define both sections several times. Member fields can be of every type, but the same class. Member fields can be declared as constants. It can be static. And uh, there are a lot of features of member fields. Uh, we consider it later, maybe on the next lesson. So, the main concept is uh, encapsulation. Encapsulation in C++ means that class encapsulates the data and operations together. And the sections public and private allows us to hide implementation details and provide the data safety. Uh, okay, I think we can uh, consider this slide, slides, two slides, a little bit later. Now, uh, let's consider one particular example. Let's consider the class that described, describes the new data type, complex number. What is a complex number? If you don't remember what is a complex number, just type in Google. Complex number, the first link to the Wikipedia, and you can find the detailed description what is a complex number? But uh, actually, uh, very, very briefly, I can say that complex number is a number that consists of two real numbers that called real and imaginary parts of the number. And Usually, a complex number is represented in the form x ply plus i y, where i is uh, just uh, notation this, that is used for imaginary numbers, imaginary part, 
A is a real part, B is imaginary part. So for, from the formal point of view, a complex number, complex number is a number that consists of two numbers, pair of numbers, real and imaginary part. So to work with such number, we should use a real and imaginary parts. We should declare this data in the class and we can declare a functions that helps us to work with this data. Functions that allows to get access to data, to real and imaginary part, some arithmetic functions, print, output functions, and so on. So some example of declaration is written here on this slide, but I think it's better to consider it in Visual Studio. Well, first, as I told you, the complex number consists of the pair of two numbers, real and imaginary part. And the first idea is to declare a struct, a structure struct complex that includes double real and double im two double numbers for real and imaginary parts of the complex number but this structure, this structure doesn't contain any, any operations. So operations with such number complex, if we declare it as a structure, must be realized as a separate functions. But okay, suppose that I declare a struct complex. Now, I can use it in main problem, so I can declare a complex number A and I can get access to the real and imaginary parts of this number declared here using point. We consider it when we discuss about structures. A and a point im equals to, for example, a point real equals to. So I assign two to the real part and one to the imaginary part of the complex number a. This program is correct. If I compile this program, I will see succeeded the message that the program is correct. What happens if I change this scale from struct to class? class. In this case, this program becomes incorrect because I show you in this presentation that uh, by default, by default, this part, this part is a uh, private is hidden. And if I don't write a keyword public, in this case, all of the data, all of the functions that are declared in the class will be 
unaccess not accessible from the main program. If I compile this program, we see the message that re complex re cannot access private member declared in the class complex. So this this data is a private member. And nobody except this class cannot get access to this member. You may ask a question, uh, why? Why we should uh, hide their data? Why we restrict the access to the data? Usually, these restrictions is done to be sure that nobody change this data except the class. Well, all the data that is written here is considered as private by default. But if I write here k.public, this data becomes accessible. And the class with all the, all the members declared as a public is full, fully corresponds to the structure. Structure has all the members public, and class by default has all the members private. But if I declare it as a public, the class becomes very, very similar to a structure. But usually, usually, all their data declared as a private. Let me write here this keyword private members. And the question is how to get access to these members? How to get access to these members? And the answer is uh, simple. We should write their public functions, public member functions that allows us to get access to the member fields. For example, I can write here a function set real part for for the first as a first example I write implementation here it's not very good but I write it here set real that gets one parameter underline real and assign the value of this parameter to the member field real as far as set re is a member function the member function get access to the private data members and it can modify the member field re and the same i can write for the for the member field im for simplicity i write because these functions are very short i write it in one line 
set in double in and in equals to underline in. Well, what I what I done? I declare two member functions that get one parameter and assign this parameter to their hidden member field. And after that, in the function main, I can call these member member functions. Look, Visual Studio hides hides their real and imaginary real and im because these members are private. These members are private. But set re is a public function and I can call it here. And also I can call the function set im. and pass the corresponding parameter. Now, this program becomes correct. The value two will be assigned to the member field re of the object A. The value one will be assigned to the member field im of the object A. If I want to declare another object, for example, B, and I can call the member functions of the variable B and assign another, another values for real and imaginary part of the object B. OK. Well. Now this program is correct. The build is succeeded. But these functions, the functions set, allows us to set in the values to the hidden private members. But how to get the values? You should. Uh, I should write the corresponding member functions get double get re that doesn't have any parameters, and the meaning of this function is to return. return the value re from the member field re and the corresponding member function get im to return the imaginary part. So these two member functions are public also, and I can call it from the main function to get access to the re and im. Let's do it. For example, I can output the value re to the screen get and after that im e point get im the functions get allows us to get access get the values that are written into the member fields 
pre and in. Let's check this simple program. What we will see on the screen, we will see that re equals two, im equals six. If I change the object here, if I call the functions get not from the object A, but from the object B, I will see on the screen four and six. Any questions about this example? Well, if you don't have any questions, let's come back to the presentation. Well, this is a class complex with double, two double values as a private members. The functions set and get and it can be written a lot of another functions that corresponds to the arithmetic operations um, printing the number to the screen we consider it uh, arithmetic operations i think we consider later next lesson so again <clears throat> the main features data is hidden the data is private we create setters and getters so-called setters and getters functions that sets and gets the data and implementation of setters and getters can be done inside the class declaration well, I think arithmetic operation we arithmetic operations we consider on the next lesson. But uh, let's look to the function print. Suppose that I want to print, I want to print the numbers to the screen like this. And suppose that I want to organize it in the form of a special function print. Here, I can declare a prototype of the function print. But the body of function can be written outside of the class declaration. What I should do to do what I should do. I should write data type void. Then the name of the class complex. Then four points. And the name of the class. Oh, sorry, name of the function print. This line tells the compiler that here I'm going to define the function print from the class complex, not a standalone function print, but the function print from the class complex. Well, let's move this implementation here here we don't have any object b but the function print is a member function and it get access it 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 has access to their hidden members re and im 
That's why I can just write here these identifiers, re and im. And after that, I can use a function print instead of this line. I can write a point print and we will see on the screen real and imaginary part of the number a. If I call b point print, we will see on the screen real and imaginary part of the object B. Let's check. Yes. Yes. It it work. It works. But if I try to output the object A using C out, it will be a mistake. Because Compiler doesn't know how to output the user defined data type, how to how to output the particular variable A of the user defined data type complex. So output the particular objects to the screen. I should use the function print, the method print that I declare here, declare in the class. Well, and also it the same can be, I can say for the for example, addition. If I want to add A plus B, compiler outputs me a mistake because compiler doesn't know how to add two variables of the user defined data type complex. But if I want just to assign two numbers, it will be OK. Because our class is simple and compiler just assign these two. Double values from the class A into the class C. And after this assignment, if I call the function print. Of the class of the object C. I will see on the screen the same values as for the object A. Two and one. Yeah. The same values. OK, let's come back to the presentation. So. I show you the way how we can implement the function outside of the class declaration. The general form of this implementation is written here. We should write the type of the result, then the name of the class, then four points, then the name of the function, the list of parameters, and the implementation of the function. In the class uh, uh, for, for the function print, the type of the result is void and the list of parameters is empty. That's why I should type only the name of the class complex here.
Well, I think. Let's implement one. One form of the addition. Of their. Complex numbers. And after that, we finish with this lesson. If I want to add two complex numbers. I should write the following function. The function add that gets the parameter and returns the result. By the way, how we uh, how how we should add these two complex number? If you don't remember, let's open the Wikipedia and open the page addition and subtraction of complex number. And the rule is very simple. If you want to add two complex numbers A plus B, we should add the corresponding real parts and add the corresponding imaginary parts of these two numbers. So the function add should return the type complex. This function belongs to the class complex. This function has name add and gets the parameter complex. Here, I should declare the result and return this result. And between declaration and returning, I should uh, write uh, write uh, values into the res im and res real. Res point re equals to re plus a point re and res point im equals to im plus a point im. Well, I add the real number, real part and real part, imaginary part and imaginary part, and return the result. Let's apply this addition. How we can apply it? C equals to A add B. So this notation more or less corresponds to the line C equals to A plus B. The value of the C will be result of the addition of A plus B. And we should see as a result six and seven. Let's check. Yes, the last number corresponds to the result, the real number C, sorry, uh, complex number C with real part six and imaginary part seven. Okay, then another features of uh, classes I think we consider on uh, on the next lesson. Do you have uh, questions about class declaration and simple method declarations?
Later this day, I will send you the presentation. I will send you the uh, video file of the lesson, and you should watch this video again if you will have any questions. Well, if you don't have any questions, let me stop recording.